Hi, I'm Simon and welcome to Watercolour Wildlife. In this little video, I want to do a direct comparison between a high quality set of paints and a budget set of paints, just to show you what the differences are and why I'd always recommend getting the best paints you possibly can. So let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so to save a bit of time, I have laid out the colours from these sets. Um, I've chosen the equivalents from the Daniel Smith set. You get six colours, and that's a warm and a cool primary. Um, with this, you get 24. So what I've done is tried to pick out the, the closest match, or at least have a warm and a cool yellow, warm and a cool red, and a warm and a cool blue, so that I can make a, a direct comparison between how those equivalent colors mix. So let's start mixing it on the paint. So on this side uh, is the, these are by Castle Art Supplies. So that's a set of 24. Just gonna put that out the way. And then there's the Daniel Smith uh, Watercolor Essential set, set of six colors, professional quality um, paints. So just quickly actually, this is, this is about 35 quid, I think I paid for this set of six, and I think you can get these for about 30 quid. So this set of 24 is slightly cheaper than this set of, um, of Daniel Smith professional quality. So I guess if this is a comparison, then in terms of price, these ones definitely win. Um, but let's have a look at the actual paint quality. I've just set out these colors, as I said, um, so that I can mix them and see how we go. Equivalent colors uh, to match. And yeah, so this is the, the budget brand and this is the, the high quality Daniel Smith range. There's one substitution here. So I've tried to keep the Daniel Smith range um, kind of as it is, or the, this set just using these six colors. So this one is actually a thalo blue and this is a Prussian blue. So it's not a, a sort of direct comparison, but then I suppose the only color they had in terms of yellow was a medium yellow. So I really have just tried to take what I can from the, uh, the budget range and match it to, to what Daniel Smith think you should have in your essential colors. So as you see, I've laid them all out. I'm just gonna get rid of these and start mixing, I think. So those are all of those ones. These are our Daniel Smith. And if you've done any of my watercolor theory uh, lessons, you'll be familiar with this kind of layout. Um, so yeah, you can, you can try this out, but this is to save you having to bother really. I've just got two water pots or four water pots here, but one for one side, one for the other side, so I can do this as quickly as possible. And I guess let's start with the, the lemon yellow. So. Listen, I'm doing this for the first time while doing this, so I haven't done this kind of comparison directly. So it's going to be interesting to see for me what kind of what kind of colours we get out of these. You know, just this is just to look at the at the colour itself, how it mixes. Um, you know what, how far it will go, those kind of things. So there's a there's a yellow. And I suppose direct comparison over here. I'm gonna to have to do this one slightly, slightly cack-handed. Those pots are in the way. I mean, I can see immediately. You know, I tried to put the same amount of, um, of pigment to match each side, and I can see here that I to. To get that coverage, I've actually used far less of that pigment. So I think this pigment is, or this paint has definitely got more pigment in it as opposed to binder. Um, to my eye, I'm not sure exactly how you'll see it on camera, but to my eye, this is a much more vibrant yellow. This is much more muted. Um, and this is a ye lemon yellow. So hands are yellow, lemon yellow, very similar. Um, both cool yellows. So I can definitely feel in this side, there's more, there's more binder in it. And I've actually used up all of that, that pigment that I had on that side. You know, it's all gone. 
and I've covered that little bit. It's not that vibrant. Same, same with this side. Well, I'm going to try and use up that paint, but I can just see I get a much bigger surface area covered um, at a much more, yeah, kind of a higher, a higher value. So much more vibrant on that on that yellow, definitely. Quickly going to run through these. So this is the, the their version of a warm yellow. So I think it's called medium yellow in the castle. And you see again, I've, I've run out of pigment already. This is something that I'm going to notice consistently. I would have expected for the amount of paint that I put there to be able to get much more, much more um, depth of color out of that. Just going to do the same here with the equivalent, which is a new gamboge. Um, and you know, I've, I've just touched into that new gamboge and I've already got a, a much richer, you know, they are slightly different colors, but just looking at, yeah, you know, haven't used all of this paint. There's still, there's still paint here. Going to try and use it all up. Definitely richer, more vibrant. So you can see immediately between the choice of yellows that these two companies have decided to put in their pack. Uh, the two yellows that I have here are a cool yellow and a warm yellow. They're going to give you a much broader range of of oranges and then into reds once we get into that. These colors are actually much closer together. The only way, you know, I could, the only way I could get closer here is by using their yellow ochre. That's the, the kind of next yellow that they have. It's a very different kind of yellow. It's not a primary yellow um, or it's not a, a bright yellow. So next one, you know, just comparing these, I can see on the page here, these colors are much more washed out. I'm, gonna, I'm having to use much more pigment on this side to achieve it. So you can really see that the price comparison point between the two uh, starts, to, starts to drop. So where we said, okay, well, these win out over price at the beginning, you know, that, that starts to level up because if I have to use half as much as this paint then as this paint, then yeah, it balances it out. So let's go without so our pie roll scarlet we've got here, and that's just called a scarlet in the in the budget range. But let's have a look. I've got all of that paint. I'm almost going to stop saying that I, you know, they don't give us greater coverage because they just don't. That that paint is gone. That's the kind of depth of pink I can get on that side. And let's have a look at this one on this side. So that's the scarlet. I mean, there are various, you know, shades of scarlet, but again, haven't used up all that paint yet. Immediately got much more coverage. You know, I can start putting that in here, still dipping into this paint, just getting a. It's a really nice coverage. Again, you know, that that's an issue with, with these paints. I'm going to just try and mix those together a little. Should have had some paint on there, but let's see how these bleed together. Next one. So this is the the rose, and I've got a quinacridone rose on this side. So let's start on that side. See these colours are going to mix nicely together. Super vibrant. Look, I've barely touched that. You see the big glob of paint I've still got there. Can dab in there, could strengthen this. It's starting to run out. Super vibrant. I'm trying to swap my brushes. So this is the rose. And that's pretty vibrant. I feel it's something that you can't see, but I can feel the, the paint has a different consistency it definitely feels like it's got more of the binder in it it feels more gloopy I suppose and it almost doesn't mix quite as well with with water so and very vibrant I mean it's something that we need to consider also that you can't see at this point is the light fastness of these colors so how long they're gonna last once you've finished your painting 
This is the, the ultramarine blue. And the equivalent on this side. And again, the, the so this, the, the primary thing, I guess is this paint goes a, a lot further. You know, it's got a lot more pigment in it. So you can see your, your value for money starts to increase there. Yeah, so these next one is, so this is the, where there, there are slight sort of color differences. This is a, a Prussian blue. Again, run out of pigment. I'd have to use a lot more. And then this side, we've got a thallow blue. These are both cool blues. So good for mixing greens. Let's go a bit more of that. Yeah, let's mix it in there. You can see, haven't used up all the paint, got more coverage. Definitely, yeah, definitely I prefer the so now I kind of, I've got those colors in there. I can, mean, I can make a direct comparison. I mean, what I would say is, I haven't quite spread out. Sorry, rinse that, that side. I need to put a bit more of this blue in here. It's ultramarine. I have to get a comparison of the color on the other side. So just comparing the colors, it's still a little bit wet, so it's difficult for me to see the exact colors, but this is this blue is much more purple to me, so it's actually much redder. Um, this rose, which I've you know, it's the closest to this quinacridone, uh, yeah, quinacridone, quinacridone rose, and it's much more pinky, I suppose. The this side is it's much redder, so you've got something closer to the red end of the spectrum rather than being too pink and just by adding a, a little bit of blue into that you probably get somewhere closer to that the red is yeah i'm just looking at the way these paints or watching the way these paints bleed together uh so ultramarine is supposed to be a really granulating color generally it leaves little pockets of color that settle into the fabric or the, or the, the kind of surface of the paper. This one doesn't seem to be doing it as much. And again, the way they're mixing, I mean, it can be down to exactly how I've mixed them on the page, but yeah, you seem to get some interesting patterns through, throughout these ones. This seems to be a softer blend. Uh, there's definitely binders working in there, I think, that are flowing the, letting the paint flow in a, in a different way. You know, the, the yellows that they've chosen, going back up to the yellows here, for me, there's not enough difference. So I wouldn't have those. Those, those two yellows are very similar in color. And you, if you're gonna have two yellows in your palette, you should spread them um, out on your color wheel. So get them as far apart as possible, which is kind of what Daniel Smith have done. They've got a nice cool uh, lemon and the new gamboge, which is really, really warm. I mean, pretty much orange. So it gives you that that great starting set. And I just want to have a look now at mixing mixing the complementary. So how these colors are gonna actually mix together uh, to form a color wheel. And what we might be able to do is just speed this bit up so that, you know, I'm gonna mix them. Well, maybe we don't speed it up actually. So I'll do the, the bottom, the bottom one first, I think, and just see how we go. So. This is your ultramarine. I'm gonna try and work through this pretty quick. And again, it, as soon as I go to the, to use the paint at all, I notice how, how thin, how thin it is really. So, and this is coming out here. So I wanna get a, an idea of, that in a bit. 
and then again so I've got my my cool cool blue this side so this is my my Prussian on this side and I'll let those colors mix together and then I've got my cool yellow this side so let's go make sure I've got clean water this yellow it's definitely a more muted yellow this I'll try and get those to mix I mean they mix okay to be fair this is because this is quite a cool blue they do make quite a nice really nice green and then we're into the warm so the warm yellow yeah, it's not a huge difference there that I can see in terms of these colors they're too to get a variety of of shades I would prefer in this palette if they put a, a more orangey yellow I can barely tell what's going on there in terms of the difference and then I'm just going to try and go on, mix those into that yeah I kind of need I'm, I'm, I'm wishing there was more paint I'm wishing more there was more pigment in this color in this set it's definitely not this is definitely a more muted orange so I've kind of run out of pigment to get you know, I've tried to put I'm going to give this one a a little advantage just because I think it needs to make a direct comparison I think it needs a bit more red and a little bit more of this lemon yellow uh, sorry that should be a medium yellow just so that I can see what kind of orange I can I can get out of this so I'm just putting in a bit more yellow or red Not a, you know, this yellow almost hasn't got so little pigment in this yellow, I think, that the red is kind of overpowering it. Those, it's not a great, not a great orange variety we've got there. You can see, I mean, they look pretty vibrant, quite nice. You could certainly mix a, you know, as long as you remember to stick to your cool and warm primaries, you can probably get a decent set of, of colours out of there. Remember always that these are not going to last as long. Um, okay, so moving on to our professional paints here. And what we should notice immediately is that I can get more intense values out of these. So let's start with the ultramarine. Let's spread that out that way. No, my colour isn't running out yet. I've still got colour there. All right, and mix in our Othello blue. Much more greeny, you see. Much cooler, much more intense. Comparing it to here. Let's go with this. This red over this way, get these two colours mixing. See what we end up in terms of purples. And then into this red, so this is a pyrrole scarlet, so it's a Lovely warm red, brush is a little bit dirty there. Um, so I probably muted that very slightly, but and then let's let's get into this orange. So orange. So this is some um, new gamboge. We it's our warm yellow. And let's drag these in together just to get that. Lovely orange, really bright. And finally, our, 
our kind of cool yellow. This would be for mixing greens with our, with our cool blue. And that is a, an amazing, amazing, lovely green. My water pots are getting dirty. But we'll just quick go into this. Spread out a bit of this lemon. And you know, I've still got loads of paint left. That's the other thing I want you to consider. I mean, I've run out of this um, ultramarine, but on all the other sort of places that I've put paint, I've got, I've still got paint left. So just bend that slightly. Well, I hope you can see, see the differences here. I mean, there are always differences in the way you mix paint together on a page. You know, it's never gonna be exactly the same just in the technique that you can use. But you can immediately see, hopefully, that the this is much more muted. There's far less pigment. I've used this, I've even given it more pigment than, than uh, the high quality set. So you can immediately see how faded these are. I mean, this is dry and this is wet. So we're gonna need to leave it a little while to make that true comparison. But just sat here in front of them, I can see that this is drying really muted. You know, just looking at the range of oranges that I've got here. So where I've kind of tried to mix an orange here. Uh, it's very pinky. These are these are too far apart on the colour wheel, I think, these two colours. And it's it makes a much more muted orange. You know, I haven't got anywhere close to, to that orange. And again, I mean, the purples. I just don't seem to have the variety of tones either. Kind of... Yeah, they, this is this is super vibrant green and, you know, all of the lovely shades of green in here. Uh, for me, there's there's no comparison. It, 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 they are worlds apart. And remember, so I think to achieve these, I'd probably have to use twice the amount of paint. Well, I hope that's given you a really good look at why artists choose to use artist quality paint. Um, over a budget brand. They actually represent much better value when you consider how far they go. Uh, also the consistencies and the, the precision of their colours, I think, um, and the repeatability of their colours over years to come. Uh, also, light fastness is a big issue that you can't really uh, explain over a short period. I'm going to stick this in the window, tape up various bits to stop the sun getting to them, and then we'll compare kind of which one has faded over time more. And I mean, I can tell you already that these are gonna fade far faster than these colors. Part of the reason why they're more expensive. So there is a reason why artist quality paints are more expensive and they are, or there are several reasons why they are more expensive. Uh, they are valid reasons. So my advice is buy decent paints, buy fewer colors. Uh, start with this Daniel Smith uh, watercolor essential set. If you don't have any watercolors or even if you've already got a set of watercolors um, buy this set add these colors to your palette and work with them when you're doing color theory practice and that kind of stuff and it'll really help sink in uh, that color theory idea in your head so i think i'll wrap it up there hope you've got some value out of this uh, if you've enjoyed it give me a thumbs up if you're watching it on youtube and i will see you in the next one